Welcome back to the Blended Online Learning Design series. In this video, Laura and I will explore how to optimize online discussions so you always get active and interesting conversations with your students. As you've seen from previous videos, we like to present our suggestions as actionable strategies. And in a moment, Laura is going to discuss how to create engaging discussion prompts, so ways to get the conversation started, as well as strategies for choosing a platform to ensure you always get the conversational outcome you're looking for. But I'd like to begin by exploring synchronous and asynchronous discussion strategies and how you merge them together. Now, the first question is why would you need to merge them together? And there's a very practical answer for that. In a blended or fully, fully virtual environment, you very likely will not see your students as often as you would in a brick and mortar environment. So you don't have the luxury of dedicating an entire class period to a large conversation where every student may or may not get their chance to interject. So there has to be a way of ensuring that the conversation or the discussion that you've begun can continue after the virtual class meeting has ended. Now, on a related note, we all know some students who aren't comfortable expressing themselves in a live environment with their peers. So by having a asynchronous platform that the student can access after the virtual class meeting is over, these students get a chance to go home and formulate their thoughts and express themselves in the discussion on that platform, ensuring that they're part of the larger conversation even if they didn't contribute in real time. Now, just because you're merging an asynchronous approach with a synchronous approach does not mean that one has to come before the other. So for instance, an example of asynchronous coming first might be you uh, proposing a debatable topic or asking a loaded question on a platform like Google Classroom or Seesaw or giving a survey to the students that gets them thinking. And then they take those results. And then in the live class session, they engage in a whole class discussion or parent share or trio talk, and the conversation continues from there. Perhaps you ask them to then go back to the asynchronous platform like Google Classroom and reflect on what they've learned having met with their peers. The opposite of that would be students beginning in a synchronous fashion and then taking that and going directly to an asynchronous platform. So for instance, um, as someone who teaches contemporary world and leans heavily on the, the political side of that course, uh, I might give the students a political hot potato to discuss, such as why does Donald Trump engage in stereotypical name calling, ask them to debate it in a breakout room, but then continue the conversation on a platform like Kialo, where they can take either side of that statement and defend it. Now, the last thing I want to say about merging synchronous and asynchronous conversations together is that regardless of which approach you lean on more, students should be acutely aware of what the expectations are pertaining to discussion and involvement in discussions in your class. So whether it's about quantity of posts or quality of content or the attitude and tone they bring to the conversation, please ensure that this is something you've discussed with them at the beginning of your course that's probably laid out in a rubric so that you know it's clear to everybody involved. Once you've thought about including a flow of both asynchronous and synchronous discussions in your classes, the next strategy is to make your discussion prompts as engaging as possible. For instance, a common mistake is to start off with a very traditional prompt. Maybe it's a question you would ask in the classroom, but instead you post it to an online discussion board to the whole class and you ask them to post a text response, to read each other's posts and to respond to two or three classmates. The teacher leads the conversation and moderates it, but in truth, it ends up being pretty boring and not as engaging as you and your students would like it to be. Well, the good news is there are some minor twists that you can add to your prompts to make them more engaging. One of my personal favorites is to use a mixed media response type discussion prompt. And it, that could take many different forms. So you might have students post a video or audio to Seesaw or to Google Classroom. I know they can record directly in Seesaw or you could use a Flipgrid linked from your Google Classroom. You could have students use a screencasting tool to record themselves to post to Google Classroom. You also might, if you're reading a novel, you might prompt students to have a, a true multimedia response where they post a text where they are selecting passages that 
describe a certain character from the story, along with a photo of someone they would cast to play that role if the book were to made, be made into a movie, as well as perhaps a song that should be on the soundtrack to that movie. I don't know. Um, but you really could get as creative as you want and allow students, give students permission to be as creative as you want. And I find when you do a mixed media prompt like that, that not only is it more engaging for students, but they are really eager to see what their classmates are posting as well. Another twist you might consider is to have students conduct an off-screen or offline interview, perhaps with a family member or a friend. It could be an on-screen interview with a guest expert, perhaps, but the idea is to have them engage with the topic in a more conversational manner and then summarize it and share their key takeaways via the online discussion. Role play is another useful twist to make the discussion more engaging. In this case, you might consider multiple lenses that are available for any particular controversial topic, perhaps immunizations, for instance, and then assign students a role to research and then report back to the class and, and engage each other with. So perhaps if, if we're talking about immunizations, they might take on the role of a parent within a healthy, uh, with a child with a healthy immune system. They may be a parent of an uh, immunodeficient child. They may be a parent who worries about their children being harmed by vaccinations, or they may take on the role of a medical professional. And as you can imagine, all of these lenses would be really interesting to explore further and to then um, prompt all sorts of deeper conversation with your students. Now, these are some great ideas and starter starting points. We have a bunch of extra resources for you on these and other strategies and techniques. So please do check out the resources we have in Quick Links. Now, the third strategy has to do with thinking about the platform you're going to use. Think about the goals you have and whether there's one particular simple platform or perhaps even a combination of platforms that would help support the discussion goals you have in mind. So let's say you want to keep things simple. I think it's perfectly fine to do mixed media format discussions in Seesaw and Google Classroom. You can have students record directly into Seesaw. You could post a Flipgrid video conversation to your Google Classroom and have students engage with that. You could have students um, use Kialo to start a debate outside of class time and then regroup and have that lead into continue, a continued debate during your Zoom or Google Meet virtual class time. So there's so many different platforms out there, more than we want to include in one video, but we do think it's important for you to start simply, add additional tools and practices gradually as you go. And eventually you might find that, you know, once you've modeled certain tools and techniques, that you might be able to prompt students with a more sophisticated prompt and platform combo like this one. In this example, you would have students pick a current event topic to then research and create a very brief two to three slide presentation. And they would use that as a backdrop and they could, they could create an interactive presentation using the slide deck and pair deck to then either use asynchronously or live in class the next time you meet. They could also use that slide deck as a backdrop for a video that they record, a narrated video using something like Loom or Screencastify, that they then upload into a tool like Edpuzzle or Playposit to then embed checks for understanding and discussion questions into the video. And then in whatever combination of tools you or your students use, you would then gather together in Zoom and use that time to debrief and discuss and take the take the conversation even deeper. So this is certainly a very advanced example where you have students leading conversation, using mixed media, using mixed platforms. And I certainly recommend trying something like this only when you yourself are comfortable with all of the tools that your students might need to use. And after you've modeled for the students how to use them, how to use them on their own, how to use them uh, together as well. So, but you know, the sky's the limit. There are lots of possibilities and hopefully this video will inspire you to consider all the possibilities and what will work well for you and for your students. 
As I've mentioned before, we have put together all sorts of resources and examples for you. Please do check out the quick links for online discussions and know that there's a lot of great tutorials and examples to support you as you leverage asynchronous and synchronous discussions in your classes as you work to make sure you're using the most engaging prompts possible and as you mix and use different platforms to support the discussion goals you have with your students. Also, we would love to include other examples. So if you or someone you know in Lester B. Pearson schools has a great example of how you go about conducting online discussions with your classes, either asynchronously or synchronously or both, please do share those examples with us so that we can include them as part of this project and include them in our quick links. We really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and we encourage you to check out the other topics in this series. Thank you so much for your time.